know from the famous Friday night school. I came here years ago with my own children and it's wonderful to come back today and I'm very lucky to be with uh, two of the mothers, it's Noura and Najila. Nice. So welcome ladies. Welcome. So there'll be a lot of people watching, probably a bit like me, yeah. who've heard about the Friday night school yes. and they've heard good things. Mm -hmm. but. It's great to have a chance to talk to you guys because you can really drill down and, and tell us exactly what happened. So, say your daughter who's now in year seven, mm -hmm. she would have been in year three or year four yes. when you got to Australia. That's right. So tell me about why you think she's got better. What is it about her three or four years here that has specifically helped her? You know, because uh, with the environment here, they like the environments. The student, they like you know how the you know the tour tutor you know they are helping us, like it's not like teacher and student no they feel like comfortable. Okay. Yes, it's like student and me and comfortable like they enjoy when even they study or when they teach them they they enjoy, they are not feeling boring or something. That's why they they wanna every Friday be here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so Najila. Uh, you were involved, obviously, before your great friend here. Yeah. Um, how did you get involved and what have you seen in terms of your own children and how they've grown to love it and learn from it here at the Friday Night School? Um, in 2009, yes, I met uh, Margaret outside Yes in the street. Yes, he asked me about my name and my country. Um, yes, and your Sudan. country is Sudan? Sudan, yeah. yes. Um, yes, I tell her about my name and my country, about my kids. Yes, he tell me, yes, he's work of the Friday night school. Um, yes, for the homework and all that. So I said, ah, that is good. I want my kids to be improved. Um, yes, he give me the address. I come straight away to the Friday night. I am enjoy when I come here, I see the different people mm. from Somalia, some people from China, some people from Italian. Some people from Sudan, yes, I come, I sit with these people, and he give me just one teacher, and he teach me about the English and all this stuff. At this time, my English is just a little bit. Sometimes, yes, I'm scared. Sometimes, yes, I'm thinking, yes, maybe I say something wrong or something like that. But when I'm enjoying with the people, I see about Friday night is very good, and the community, and the help the kids a lot. Even my kids, every Friday night, I didn't miss one day the Friday nights. Even now, I'm in hard situation about my child in hospital. I born the little boys, but they still he's sick in hospital. I leave him in hospital. I come back for the Friday night. You Where wanted to be here. Yeah, I want to be here. My kids, he won't be there. And I think what maybe I didn't understand perfectly is it's not just your children who are getting the chance to get better at English and maths and things. It's yourselves as well, being That's in a right. new country, That's having to right. learn the language. That's right. Now, for someone who's never had to go through that, I'm one, I'm how hard is it to get better at English when it's not your main language? It's hard. It's hard because, you know, we, you know, we speak in like an African language. When we speak, and when we learn English, it's a little bit hard. We come here, our kids, they learn something, and even the mom even learns something. We sit here with the teacher. We, uh, sometimes we have like conversation with the teacher. She wanna understand what level we are. Yes. And then after that, and uh, she decides, and we study. Uh, slowly, slowly, she not push you. Mm. And now we can see, uh, we prove we can speak nicely. You speak beautifully. <laughs> Thank you. And are you like you've been here four years, yes. Nira? Um, are you surprised yourself at yes. how well you are now speaking English? Yes, even now when I speak with my kids, like I speak same with the, how they speak and I speak. No, before I feel shy, I say, maybe this one wrong, this one not. I, I tell my kids, oh, talk to the teacher or do something. So now I can speak, I can do anything, you know. Did your children themselves teach you a little bit themselves? Mm -hmm. Because they would have been learning the language at school, I suppose, as yeah. well as as well as here. But the, sometimes it's not the elder the kids, but the kids is busy by himself. When you come home, you see the child just in the computer, and the son just in the iPad 
when you ask him about this, I say, ah, oh, mom, I'm busy. I do it my homework. I want to do this. I want to do this. Even I ask my daughter, when day you can come and sit down and teach me? Say, why, mom? Why doesn't know the English? You in Australia and you went to school every day and you come back. So what you do it by yourself? I say, oh, I learn. <laughs> Welcome when? to having kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about the people who do the teaching, mm -hmm. who do the tutoring? They're secondary school students from a big number of schools around Melbourne. Um, how have you found them and how have your children found them? Perfect. Really, it's, it's very nice. It's very good. Tell me what's good about them. About the teacher? Yeah. Uh, you know, with, with my kids, how they teach them, it's good, but with us, for mothers, how they teach us, it's, you know, they understand us. They understand mother and they understand how the pressure we are in the house with the kids and everything. So when they teach us, they teach us some things like, you know, we, we can understand. Mm -hmm. They know push you. Okay? So sometimes when, when we have conversation, okay, they say, oh, don't say this. Say that. I say. Yeah. Wow, it's very nice. But the way they're saying is beautiful. With respect and yeah. that's they're not showing you. Okay, I know and you don't know. It's very nice how the way they tell us. So with Elliot, Jack, and Bridget. Elliot from St Kevin's, Jack from Xavier, Bridget from Genazana. Bridget, why do you come to Friday night school? Um, I come here pretty much because I find it really rewarding to give back to the community and I think it's important um, in the positions that we're in in society, I think it's important that we do that and seize all the opportunities we have to do that as well. How many years have you been doing it? Uh, since year nine. Right. So four. Yeah. And uh, what have you got out of it? I mean yourself, have you found it a rewarding experience? Yeah, I found it really rewarding because every week is different, like you tutor a new child and you learn something new about how to interact with them and it's just also really rewarding um, watching them grow and learn new things as well. So Jack, um, how many years have you been doing the Friday night school? Um, I began in year seven. So this would be what year? Fifth, fifth year? Fifth year. I'm trying to guess what year you're in. Tell me about one or two experiences that have really hung with you in terms of kids you've tutored and why those experiences were a bit special. Um, when I first began Friday night school, when I was quite younger, I worked with the younger children and certainly that's something that's inspired me to continue going to Friday night school because they, I noticed that they get a lot of joy out of it and having not had much experience with younger children, it was really, as Bridget mentioned, rewarding um, just to sort of engage and create sort of an environment where they're enjoying themselves on a Friday afternoon, probably quite exhausted and tired. And I certainly really enjoyed that and that's something that stuck with me. Ellie, what about you? Same question really. Um someone or an experience that stuck with you? I've only been doing this for a couple of years, but over that time I spent a lot of the time with mostly the same kids, which has definitely helped me form a bond with those individual kids, which has been really great for, for me. Just being able to see how much, even in the past two years, just see how much that one child can grow. He's fairly young, so he's able to grow just in maths and English and just see how well he's going in all those things. So it's Dan from Xavier, Sam from Star of the Sea, yep. and Hugh from St Kevin's. Okay. So let's start with you, Dan. Yeah. Uh, Friday night school, big part of your life. Yeah, um, Tell me why you come, tell me why you enjoy it. Uh, it's just a great way to finish my week. Um, you know, I spend five days at school, you know, thinking about myself and you know, my own learning. Uh, it's just great to be able to come and, and use that for someone else. Um, and just be around some great people, and give something to them. Yeah. Why are they great people? What have you found about the people you work with? They just, they're so welcoming to you. Like, I mean, I come from a different background, um, but they've never, you know, begrudged me. They've always just, you know, slapped me on the back, said hello, you know, called me by name. Um, they're just, yeah, some of the, the warmest, loveliest people. I've met, yeah. So tell me about a couple of the people that sort of stick in your mind and, and why. Um, yeah, I've been here since he's seven and I've tutored the same kid um, right from the first time. So where's that person from? Uh, he's from Vietnam. Oh, yeah. um, he's two years younger than me um, and I remember like, he would never want to do his spelling words. He'd always shut his book when I asked him to do his spelling. Um, <laughs> and he was always really grumpy but you know, he gradually warmed up um, and now you know, we're best friends. Um, he's in year 10. Um, I sort of feel like a bit like a proud dad, you know, um, he's, he's grown up, he's, he speaks much better, he can spell his words now. Um, yeah, it's just sort of tracing along his journey, um, seeing him grow up, yeah. No, great answer and, and great story. 
So Sam, similar yeah. question for you. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been involved in the Friday night school? Yeah, not as long as Dan. So I've, I've been doing it for two years now. Yes. So it's opened um, to year tens and up at our school. But um, yeah, it's been a fantastic experience and it's something that I'd love to, I suppose, continue even after school. I, I know it's opened um, to for adults as well. So yeah, that's something I'd love to. So you, do you find them really appreciative? Do, do they really find this a bit of a buzz? Um, yeah, definitely sometimes when um, Probably when you get away from the work, you start just having a bit of fun with them and try to develop relationships. But even in that, like they do appreciate when you're there helping them, you know, get the answer or read over the text or something like that. So definitely. Are you encouraged as you learn to become a tutor? Are you encouraged to try and take it beyond just learning and try and develop a bit of a, a relationship or a friendship as we were talking about before? Absolutely. I think that's the ultimate goal. I think, you know, tutoring is why you know we're here but I think yeah the ultimate goal is to develop a really strong relationship with the students and just you know have a good time in the end. Joseph studied at Marcelin College but he actually began here at the Friday night school. Tell us about your years here Joseph. Yeah so I started here when I was in prep so when I was five years old and ever since then come through graduated and then now I'm at uni, coming back here to help out with all the kids and yeah, just trying to give back. What do you find stimulates you now as you are giving rather than receiving? Uh, just like, because the way I, when I was going through this program, I felt really like good about it, like the support, everything about it's amazing. So I just want to do my part, get those kids to feel the same way I did when I was going out. Margaret? You said I wasn't allowed to talk to you today, but I've accosted you here on the stairs. Tell me what you feel every Friday when you see this just come to life. I feel very proud of the young tutors that come and help and the children that want to learn and how all the different races mix without any problems and they've got the one aim is to better their lives, both of them. The, the ones that are privileged and the ones that are not quite so privileged. And they've got you to thank because this is something quite wonderful. Well yes but they've got an awful lot of other people to thank because we've had wonderful support from the Catholic Church but also wonderful support from people that have come genuinely for 21 years. We've got one child who was the first family we started with still comes back every Friday night to help. What's one message you might give to all the thousands of people who will watch this in terms of if they know somebody who maybe is just new to Australia mm -hmm. and trying to get into the life of Melbourne and uh, the community, mm -hmm. what would you say to them about the famous Friday night school? I'll tell them, I'll tell them, come straight away. Don't think Friday night is the right place to be here. And you, Najila? Um, yes, I want to tell especially the kids, especially the all the kids that come here on Friday night. I want to tell them the important thing, don't miss the Friday night at all. <laughs> come on time and learn your English. You prove anything you want and you can get it in your life. The Margaret and the Friday night is called, especially just yes, I them, for all the Friday night school, at the top of the Friday night school, the Margaret should best the woman. That's true. Right. Margaret Gary is a legend.